your uh, presenters today will be Fyodor, who has been the author of the open source and map security scanners and authored it in 1997 and continues to coordinate its development, as well as David Fifield, who has been doing InMap for several years, and he the, does the maintenance of the NCAT and InMap scripting engine. Great. Thank you. <laughs> All right, can you guys hear me in the back? Yay. Woo, all right. Well, I'd like to thank you all for coming. I know there are 10 other talks you could be at right at this time, including one of a guy who likes to pretend he's a girl on social networks. So I'm glad you uh, decided on ours instead. He is a girl. <laughs> I guess so. So uh, I would like to start this talk uh, with a couple questions for the audience, actually, that'll help us tailor it to the right level and not cover anything you already know. So who here already knows about and has used the NMAP security scanner? <laughs> all right, all of you. We'll uh, skip NMAP for dummies. And um, who here has already read the 40 pages of NSE documentation that we included in the conference CD? Huh. <laughs> Anybody? All right, well, that's OK, because um, we're going to cover the highlights of NSE and all the neat things you can do with it. And I'm hoping that that may inspire people to actually try it yourself and maybe even try your hand at writing NSE scripts. I want to mention that all the features that we're going to show off today uh, will work for you on either NMAP version 5.35 DC1, the DEF CON release that we did earlier this month, or 5.35 DC18, which is our latest subversion release. So let's get started. I'm going to begin with a quick outline to let you know what to expect from this talk. We're going to first go into a brief introduction on what NSE is, what you can use it for, how to use it. And then we're going to actually show you how to use NSE with some large scale demonstrations. In the first one, we're going to scan millions of hosts of a large corporation and show what sort of information you can gather for that. And then David is going to show you in a completely different way the power of NSE, although his also involves scanning millions of hosts. After that, we're going to look at writing your own NSE scripts. Then we're going to do a neat demo for you and then show off some NMAP news and developments uh, that I'm excited to show. And then we'll take any questions that you might have. So with that out of the way, let's begin. The NMAP scripting engine is one of NMAP's most powerful and flexible features. It allows users to write and share simple scripts to automate a wide variety of network tasks. For example, enhanced network discovery, vulnerability detection, and even exploitation you can do with NSE. And the nice thing is that you don't have to write all these scripts yourself. They're packaged. We have 131 of them packaged with NMAP uh, that you can use that solve a wide variety of networking tasks. I feel that NSE really completes NMAP scanning mission. We already had host discovery where we would scan a network and try and figure out which machines are up and available. And we put in OS detection which allows you to figure out what operating system is running on those machines. We have port scanning followed by version detection, which lets you look at all the services those machines are offering and what applica application versions are available. And then NSE is sort of the glue which binds all of that knowledge detected by NMAP together and lets you use that to further interrogate the network in whatever, whichever ways you have desired. So we're going to look at a quick example on this slide. I don't know if people can read it in the back, but I'm going to go over what it says anyhow if it's too small. Uh, we're here scanning a machine called scanme.nmap.org, which is a machine I run for people who want to test NMAP, see how it works, do some scanning. As you'll see later in this talk, I'm not shy about scanning other people's networks and machines, so I feel it's only fair to offer one of my own for people to scan me back. The, we also use the hyphen capital A option, which is the only option you need in order to enable a number of advanced features, including OS detection, version detection, 
and the nmap scripting engine with its default set of scripts. Now the output you can see here, I think people are going to be f pretty familiar with if you're an nmap user, most of it. But we're just going to look at the parts which are related to NSE. This first one is under the open SSH port. We see this SSH host script, the host key script, which basically tells you what the hash of the server's SSH cryptographic key is uh, for when you're connecting to it. Now such a script might be useful if you were scanning your network and maybe wanting to detect invalid keys that might be a signal of a Trojan SSHD or another sort of attack. But what I actually find it more useful for is as a unique identification for a host that's not related to its IP address. So for example, I may scan a machine and find a lot of information about it and be wanting to further interrogate it more the next day, but the next day it might be totally gone, changed to a different IP address because it used a DHCP server to configure itself. Well, with SSH host key, you can just scan the network again, find the machine with that same host key, and you know that's the same one that you've already been, you know, working on. Similarly, if I scan a big network and I see several machines which are all configured very similarly, I might wonder, are these all different hosts with different instances of the OS and potentially different application versions on there? Or is it just one host with a bunch of IP aliases uh, listening on its interfaces? Well, SSH host key again, you can see if each of those IPs has the same host key and that'll give you a good idea of whether it's fundamentally the same host. If you look a bit further down, you see the HTML output. We have some script output there. The first one is a super simple one. HTML title simply connects to the web server, a root, grabs the root document, and gives you the title and prints it out. Very simple, but it can be useful in the context of your scan to see this information. The next one we see is called HTTP methods, which looks at the methods supported, you know, git, post, whatever and tells you if there are any that are kind of risky. In this case, it says, well, the trace method is a little bit risky, and here's a URL that gives you details. If it had seen like the delete method or the put method, then it would have raised bigger alarm bells. So these are just a few scripts, and they're pretty trivial ones, although they give you useful information, but we have a lot more. And I want to introduce you to our NSE, you know, full list to give you an idea of the breadth of tasks you can accomplish in NSE. So one of the features we have is a site called the NSE Documentation Portal, which you can reach at any time at nmap.org slash NSE doc. And it gives you a bunch of information about all the scripts we have. Right now, I just want to show you the categories pretty quickly so you can get an idea of the different sorts of tasks you can automate. We have the auth category, that's for authorization related scripts, particularly like brute forcers for protocols and the like. For example, we see here AFP brute, which is a brute forcer for Apple's file sharing protocol. The next category is called default. That's the scripts we've personally curated this list to try and find the ones that we think would be most useful to run by default. That means it shouldn't be crashing networks and services. It shouldn't look like an attack to the remote network administrators, and it actually has to give generally useful information. We don't want to spam your NMAP results with a bunch of information that may be useful in some real obscure case, but not for most users. For those, we can have a different script that you can just run uh, on request. The discovery scripts is an area where NMAP, of course, really likes to shine. You know, it's basic goal is network discovery to tell you what's on the network. And for any of these categories, you can actually click on the link and you can actually see all the scripts we have in that category. So for discovery, we have pages and pages of different scripts to get you information from various databases, IRC servers, websites, DNS, it goes on and on. We have DOS a category for denial of service attacks. We don't have many in there. Exploit category for exploits for vulnerabilities. Fuzzers, I think there's just one of those. Then intrusive and safe, those basically are just the classification category for how intrusive a certain script is likely to be. 
The ones that are likely to be pretty safe to run in general, we put in that category. But if it might cause problems in some situations, might crash things, might be perceived as an attack, you see that it's in the intrusive category and you can look more carefully at why that is before you actually run it. Um, we have malware detection scripts in the malware category. Nmap was one of the first to uh, detect the Conficker worm remotely last year and got a lot of attention and downloads from that. We have version detection category. Our version detection system now has more than 6,000 signatures in it and so it can detect all sorts of things but there are some protocols that even our version detection isn't powerful enough to solve. Some that actively try and hide themselves on the network to make them harder to find. Uh, things like Skype is an example where our normal version detection can't find it but we were able to do it in an NSE script. So through this documentation portal, that's a great way to go through the scripts that are available and find the ones you need. Now the next step is once you find a script, you want to find more information on it. And so I'm just going to show one quick example here. It's a script called NFSLS. If you want to find more information on that, you click on it and you get this special page which starts out with a way to download the script source code so you can see exactly what it does. Then it follows with a description, a quick summary of what the script does. Uh, this one is basically like LS for NFS shares. So it shows you which shares are available on the remote NFS server and which files on those shares are offering and under what permissions. And so we see the script arguments it can take, like a max files to say only show me the first five or ten files. You know, the time, do we want to show just the modification time or the access time or the change time. And a few arguments that actually come from the RPC library which it uses in order to get its data. Uh, those, even though they're not in the script specifically, those arguments can still be useful because they're used by libraries which are used by the script. We have an example of how to use it and then an example of what the output looks like. You can see here he really did try and make it look like a directory listing you might get with LS. It tells you which of those categories that we talked about it's in. This one's in discovery because it's finding more information from the network and it's in safe because it's unlikely to cause network outages or other problems. So that's just a real quick overview of our documentation portal and where you can go if you want to find out what scripts are available to use. And the number of scripts we have has actually been increasing pretty rapidly. I have a chart here and you may not be able to read the um, labels from far back but basically it's each year on the 1st of January and the 1st of July how many scripts that we had available at that time. And it took us a while in order to figure out what, um, how our review process would work and to develop all the infrastructure. So growth was pretty slow at first. But lately it's been growing up much faster as you can see. Even though we've been working on NSE for four years, in the last year it has more than doubled in the number of scripts it contains. And I won't be surprised if it has doubled again by the time Black Hat rolls again, rolls around next year. So that's the system, NSE, what it does, how it works. But I think what can be really useful is to kind of show how it can work in a large scale situation, how it can find useful data for you. And to do this, I want to show off a number of scripts that we have for dealing with SMB and MSRPC protocols. Now these were actually written by a fellow named Ron Bose who basically spent months digging into MSRPC and RPC and how those protocols work. I don't really wish that on anyone but it's nice that he was able to do it. Um, he contributed 13 scripts and so it was quite a gift to the MMAP community. We have informational ones for OS detection, SMB, uh, getting the server stats, system info, security mode. We have enumeration scripts where it connects to the remote server and tries to enumerate data like the users, the domains, the groups, processes, sessions, and shares. And then we have three more intrusive scripts that go in, like for example SMB brute, 
tries to do brute force authentication cracking 